Hello everyone, welcome to the driveway and thanks for joining me in my efforts to remove as much trunk space from my car as humanly possible. Back here I have a SCAR SDR12 in a sealed box from Amazon. Now, <clears throat> this does all right. It's a high excursion 12 inch subwoofer. I mostly have this as a filler filling in where the uh, factory six by nines can't reach. With most music, you can't even tell this is back here until you really crank it up or listen to something with a whole lot of bass. But most of the time you can turn this thing on and off and not even tell it's there. Problem is this is tuned to about like 45 Hertz or so. And I really want to go lower. There's also the little issue that I have this little kicker CX 300, which is a 300 watt RMS amplifier. This is a 600 watt rated sub. So I am massively underpowering this. So I kind of want to fix both of these things. As it happens, Scar Audio, who makes the subwoofer, actually makes a complete base package that I really should have bought off the bat that comes with a matched box and a, I think, 800 watt RMS amplifier. Um, but I didn't do that. I just bought the subwoofer. But I was bored the other day, so I bought the rest of it. So the sealed box is going to go bye-bye, and the 300 watt kicker is going to go bye-bye, and we're going to uh, ho hopefully go boom a bit more. You all forgot I owned a Miata, didn't you? All right, let's see what we got here. Start this off with an unboxing. Uh, I do want to point out, I paid for all of this. Scar isn't sponsoring or send me any of this stuff. I just kind of like them as a company. You know, it's a, it's an American company. Uh, I don't think this stuff is made here, but at least it's, you know, American jobs for the most part. So that's nice. And their prices are really reasonable. I think this whole base package is like $350. There'll be a... Uh, There'll be an Amazon link in the description. If you're interested by the end of this video. Hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Comes with a sticker. Ooh, quite a nice design. Wow. Their logo actually embroidered on the side. Some really nice push posts. Not much wiggle to them. 21 June on a sticker here. I don't know if that means it was made in June of 2021. I'm assuming so. SK1X12V, wonderful model name. Very, uh, very easy to remember, rolls off the tongue. This is pretty well made. I gotta say, I'm impressed. You've got uh, a nice radius to the port here. Looks like it's radius back in the port as well. You've got uh, snacks, delicious. Don't forget those. The padding is actually stapled in there. You can see where they used glue everywhere. Gosh, even the entry to the port in the back there is uh, chamfered around the edges. I'm uh, pretty impressed here so far. So let's take a look at the amplifier now. This is the amp, 800 watt RP 800.1D. Do not mount to subwoofer enclosure. Yep, I've made that mistake before. I haven't blown anything, but I did destroy some cables when I was pulling the sub out of my car and uh, forgot the amp was attached to it. Let's see here. Okay, so we have an Allen key. So I guess these are Allen posts. Yep, okay, cool. The uh, amplifier that's in there is Phillips, which I don't like quite as much. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, remote base knob. I don't really love those. In my opinion, a system should just be set up so that it sounds good all the time and you don't have to go turn the base up and down. And then that's a 3.5 millimeter extension jack for that. Pretty sure you can leave that out uh, without causing any problems, so I think I'm going to, at least for now. Lots of extruded aluminum. Uh, low level inputs. Looks like there's some basic You've got a low-pass filter, which is nice. Subsonic filter, which is also nice. Gain and a sort of, uh, I think that would be for like slope. Um, can see some pretty beefy components in there. Some pretty large caps, some very large internal cabling. And then of course you have all the posts. Those all look perfectly cromulent. 
And this is 800 watts at one ohm stable, which is what I'll be running it at. This is a pretty nice little unit though. I'm a big fan, but uh, we'll just go ahead and set this on the plastic over here and take a look at getting out what's in the car. So first, I guess I'll just get the box out. This does not have push posts. These are the uh, twisty type. All right. And let's take a look at our amp situation. Boy, it's kind of dirty back here. Go ahead and undo the fuse. Oh, no way good. That thing sucks. This is a, <clears throat> this is a random Amazon um, installation kit. The battery is right underneath the amplifier here. So I'm just going to start installing the new amp right away so that I don't have cables in limbo. Hmm. So I've crimped connectors onto the end of these and this is just designed to take, well, I guess you would crimp on lugs really, but that is clearly not what that's designed for. So I'm gonna have to cut and strip these, it looks like, which is a bit of a pain, but hey, you know, for the end result, I guess it's fine. Okay, let's unscrew this from this little piece of plastic, whatever's that I've had it mounted to. Undo the RCAs, and there's the old. I'm gonna wanna mount this back on here somehow, so let's get an idea for how that's gonna work. I'm thinking just do it like that, should be fine. Probably shouldn't have put all these uh, cables on here just yet since I just still need to make those holes. Oops. I could definitely put a bit more effort into this mounting plate and installation, but for the now, these are uh, four gauge wires, which appear to be a perfect fit in here. So we've got our battery 12 volt, our ground, our remote, and our speaker wires all nice and snug in there. Make sure they're not gonna come free. Yeah. There's a channel there that's actually quite handy. I've got the remote wire tucked away. Now it's just the speaker wires. So let's go see the speaker, I suppose. So we're getting close. Now we just got to take the subwoofer out of the old box and transfer it to the new one, which means lots of screws. I was having a look in here and uh, pretty nice wire in here, uh, silver core, pre-stripped for you, all that stuff. So give me a few seconds to get all these out. Nice push posts on the uh, subwoofer itself. And it's gonna go in here like that. I gotta remember that I'm looking at this backwards. So let's go ahead and take that off. Dang, I really need like 14 hands. Scar in the future, if you could make this just a little bit uh, these, these wires just a little longer, that'd be great. Gosh, there's just barely enough room for both wires in those posts. This is the part where I feel like I'm gonna get yelled at by the comments because I'm not really sure what the correct move is here. So let's grab a drill and get some pilot holes because I don't really like to just dr uh, screw into MDF. Um, what do you think? That look level to you? Looks level to me. Yep. I think we're probably good. Not like I'm going to be staring at it a whole lot. There we go. Ah, they go in so easy with pilot holes. That's fantastic. Let's me use the uh, double ratcheting on this cobalt screwdriver. Oop. It's also uh, another benefit of the pilot holes is that it's very, very obvious when you're at the bottom. If you're just trying to uh, use the screw itself to make the hole, a lot of times you'll just strip the MDF out because the resistance of it actually bottoming out and the resistance of making the hole happen are so close together. It's also why I'm using this screwdriver right now instead of a uh, drill or a bit driver. All right, that's the last one. And that means it's time for the fun part, dumping it in the trunk and uh, tuning the amplifier up. So let's see how heavy this beast is with a sub in it. 
not bad. That's unfortunate. The uh, the posts are on the opposite side as the old one. <laughs> Let's see if I can make that work. Signs point to not really. Sometimes innovation is required. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I should have probably looked at this a bit closer before I screwed it down, but our gain is minimal. Uh, we've got no EQ, low pass filters at 50 hertz. I'm gonna turn that up. Subsonic filters off, which is what I want. Yeah, I don't know where that is on the low pass filter, but I'm aiming for 120. I have like one copyright free song that has a decent bass. So I guess let's go test this thing. Okay, I found like the only remotely bassy copyright free song that I could find. So let's give that a listen. Uh, reasonably decent volume. <laughs> Well, I've done a bit of listening with a variety of genres and volume levels, and I'm actually really impressed with this. Uh, typically, a vented or ported enclosure like this is gonna be a bit woofier and less controlled than a sealed enclosure, but I think actually properly amping my subwoofer sort of negated a bit of that, because I'm getting really crisp kicks, and I can actually hear my kicks now. That was kind of a downside of the sealed system, was my kicks were controlled, but very quiet compared to, you know, a EDM bass line that's more of kind of just a sine wave. Honestly, for the price of this whole setup, you know, you'd get the uh, the subwoofer, the box, the wiring kit, except a better wiring kit because it'd be scars instead of this $5 Amazon thing I've got, and the amplifier, that's a steal. I would have died and gone to heaven if this was available when I was in uh, high school. And again, they're not paying me to say this or anything. I bought all this stuff with my own money, but if you want to help me pay for it, you can use my affiliate link in the description and get this for your own car. You do take a bit of a hit on trunk space, but having that low end, I mean, especially with the genres of music that I like, if you're not getting that low end, you're missing a lot of the song. And then we listen to some, you know, uh, Kings on Fire and stuff like that, and you really couldn't tell the sub was there. If it's mixed to have a really strong bass drum, you'll have a bass drum, but overall it's very similar effect to actually being at a concert for a given band, if you're listening to like rock or something like that. Uh, some, some Dire Straits music, uh, they have a bit of a stronger mixed kick, and that can be amazing when it hits you over the back of the head, uh, especially with all the other components in this car, which are due for replacement. Honestly, the components in this car are probably more of a detriment to the audio quality than the sub was, but uh, this was more fun, so I did it first. So there we go, that's a quick little review of the SCAR 12-inch uh, SDR-12 base package. I, I rate this, I totally recommend this if you've got the trunk space. They have smaller versions as well, and if they're as good as this, I mean, I might pick up the 8-inch one for the Insight. Apparently the shape of that thing is really conducive to audio builds. Who knew? Thanks for watching.